All right, back out east we go. <laughs> because now we can pick up that last heart container that is out and about in the world. We have ourselves half of the Triforce. We got four slices of it. We got four slices of our giant shiny Dorito. So what we need to do is complete the second half of the game. And this is where I feel the game gets hard. And if you're playing second quest, Dungeon 1 can be just as hard as Dungeon 5. So, <laughs> stock up on those hearts while you can. Okay, so we're back over where we picked up the arrows. Uh, now, for you eagle-eared viewers, uh, or listeners, I don't know if you're just watching this in the background or not, uh, you will notice that the overworld theme is just the main Zelda theme on repeat. There is maybe five tracks, five, six tracks in the entire game. There's dungeon theme, Ganon dungeon theme, overworld theme, game over theme, which is just the credits theme, and the, the intro theme, and that's it. <laughs> there are not many tracks in this game. All right, so now that we have ourselves the full extent of our health meter that we can reach right now, which is 12 hearts, what we're going to do is we're going to head to the graveyard, which is just past dungeon three. Because dungeon five is where I like to walk into with the magical sword. And the magical sword is the most powerful weapon in the game. So what that will entail us doing is it'll be increasing our damage output yet again and have it be doubled. So we're going to go from two damage to a whole whopping four damage, meaning we're going to be doing the same amount of damage as not only the silver arrows, but our sword strikes will be doing the same amount as our bomb damage. So that's going to prevent any enemies that split apart from doing just that. And that's what we want to kinda, kinda prevent enemies from doing is that silly split thing because it just makes more work for us to do. And I don't wanna be killing enemies more than I have to. So to get to the graveyard, what we have to do is we have to head back over to, to dungeon three you know what, while I got it on the mind, what we're going to do is we're going to be picking up some medicine here. So what we're going to do is we're going to equip that letter. And we're going to show it to the old woman. And we are going to purchase medicine before we go. As the medicine is what's going to help us get through the second half of the game. And while I have it on the mind, I believe the food was $60, uh, 60 rupees, whatever. It was. I'm going to be picking up the bait for Dungeon 7. I'm going to be... Going to be preemptive about this. There is one more item we can get in the overworld as well, being the, the strength upgrade. But I feel we don't need it. You know? Because <laughs> I'm not really going to be taking the warps around because... The route I'm taking for this game is the most direct route around the land of Hyrule, so you don't really need to use the warps if you're just following along. But I will be pointing out what screen the warps are on, just so you can use them at your, at your leisure. So to our north, right here, you see there's a little moblin walking around. Hmm, well this is Dungeon 7. We'll be going there later. Not yet, but but later. So we're going to just walk past this guy. I do want some arrow usage here, because Dungeon 5... No, Dungeon 6 is Aquamentus again. No, that's Dungeon 7. What the heck is Dungeon 6? Is it another Gleok? No, Dungeon 6 is, is, is Goma. Dungeon 5 is Dig Dogger, right. So, this is the Lost Woods. So, to get through the Lost Woods is fairly easy. All you gotta do is go north, then west, 
and then south, and then west. And that's it. Nothing fancy. Nothing complex. <laughs> so there is a neat trick with in the graveyard here. If you attack the guinea, that's the ghost enemy, which would be known later as pose. If you deal damage, enough damage to it, it will die like all the rest. But if you deal enough damage to it and then activate all these graves, as you see, repeat guineas show up. If you kill the guinea you were dealing the most damage to, all the guineas on the screen will die. And we'll all drop special items, rupees, hearts, whatnot. Oops. Yeah. So this grave has the magical sword. So now we have our attack maxed out. So we're we're kind of pimped out. We're we're ready to tackle dungeon 5 and just Tear, tear the heck out of it. So, now we can kill red Lynels in one strike. And we can also kill the blue Lynels, which are another one of those enemies that can drop bombs, but they're a lot more rare. So I wouldn't really be killing Lynels for your, for your source of bombs, especially with Zelda 1 controls. So, what we're going to be doing is activating this statue here. No, this statue. There it is. That is the power bracelet. So we have most of our... Most of our inventory here. We still need certain items. The... The wand, the book, the lion key, the red ring, and then finally the silver arrows. Uh, the silver arrows are one of those mandatory, don't miss it, because it is missable. And if you miss it, you're gonna be wandering around the world for a long time, looking for one item to finish the game. As the Silver Arrow is the only weapon that can kill Ganon. So, do not miss the Silver Arrows, and they are in Dungeon 9, along with the Red Ring. So, just don't miss getting the, the Silver Arrows. So, to reach Dungeon 5, on this screen, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be heading north. North, 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 north. Up the mountain. That will get us to Dungeon 5, which is protected by one measly lever. <laughs> so this is Dungeon 5. This is where we're introduced to Gibdos. Now, in this dungeon, there is a hint titled uh, Dig Dogger Hates Certain Kinds of Sounds. Uh, where are my... That's another hint that wasn't really touched. But a lot of the, the hints in the game are vastly different than what they're supposed to be. Uh, for example... Uh, Eastmost Peninsula is the secret. Secret power is said to be in the arrow. That's one of the the secrets that was changed. Uh, secret power is said to be in the arrow is another... Is a relevant hint, I guess, if you want to talk about the silver arrows. So we have to kill all three of these guys. So equip your bombs. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, that's not good. Damn. Uh, oh well. Stupid Dodongo, hold still! Get over here. Jerk. <laughs> so we're gonna pick these up. Because I wasted a whole bunch fighting those guys. We have to go this way. There's no choice in the matter. In order to beat the boss of this dungeon, Dig Dogger, we need to get the whistle. Ouch. 
I'm gonna be picking these up. Thank you very much. So uh, that secret power is said to be in the arrow. That was a fabricated hint specifically for the Western release of the game. The hint originally in the original localization was was titled, There are some creatures that are weak against sound. That is a hint for Pole's voice because the Player 2 controller of the Famicom came with a microphone that if you yelled into it, the Pole's voice would die automatically. And that hint doesn't translate well to the NES version because... The whistle doesn't kill the pole's voice, and there's no microphone on the NES controller. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head to the south. Get ourselves a replacement key. Now, for Let's Play purposes, if we bomb this wall, we will come across our first bomb salesman. Now, he wants a hundred rupees, and he'll extend our bomb count by four. So, if you have the spending cash, I would highly, highly suggest getting more bombs. Because bombs are super helpful in this game, as they're used for almost everything. So, the blue dark nuts, uh, like I mentioned, uh, do have more health than the red variants. But with the magical sword, they go down in two strikes, so... Use the block to your advantage. I'm a uh, kind of dying here. Because if you can see there, the the sword graphic does extend just past the block. And and hitting a hitting a dark nut you does reach from the other side of the block. The Dark Nuts were changed for Zelda 2. They don't exist in Zelda 2. In Zelda 2, the Dark Nuts become the Iron Knuckle, which... They're a whole lot nastier in Zelda 2. <laughs> so we've just picked up the whistle. This now allows us to beat the dungeon. And that's kind of a, a trend that later Zeldas will carry over is you use the item you found in the dungeon to beat the boss at the end. Such as Ocarina of Time, you pick up the slingshot in the Deku Tree and you use the slingshot to beat Goma. You use the arrows in the, in the Forest Temple to beat... Oh, this is bad. To beat Phantom Ganon, you use the Megaton Hammer in the Fire Temple to beat... to beat uh, Volvagia. You use the Gibdo to get Link down to half a heart in Dungeon 5. All that stuff. I don't want to fight them. But they might drop hearts. <laughs> no, they did not. Oh well. Um, you know, it would probably be hoove of me to... Uh, to use this. <laughs> Heal up before heading further into the dungeon. Alright, so now that we have our warp whistle, we can beat the dungeon. And for you Mario 3 enthusiasts, there you go. However, uh, Zelda 1 did it first, so... When people say, oh, the whistle from Mario 3. No, the whistle from Zelda 1. Because <laughs> Zelda 1 did it first. I'm ignoring these three. I don't need to fight them anymore. There we go. Healed up. Five bucks. I will be taking that. So, in order to reach Dig Dogger, we have to head all the way north up here. Ah! <laughs> Dark Nut. I am on a... I'm on a waterbed, so that means Dark Nuts cannot reach me.
There we go. So we gotta head all the way over there. However, I know where I'm going, so we don't really need the map at all. So the little rabbit guys, that is a pole's voice. Uh, like I said, the the whistle they don't care about. You had to use the the Famicom controller, yell into it, and they die in one shot. However, if you have the bow, they go down in one shot anyway. And they are a great way to farm rupees as well, as the Poles voice are phenomenal money drops. They are one of the best ones in the game right behind levers. So if you're looking for money, levers and Poles voice, they are the enemies you're going to want to look for. In the next room, we should be encountering more Poles voice. There they are. I missed. Missed again. Wow, way to prove me wrong, game. After I just finished saying Poles voice are great money drops, didn't drop a single friggin' rupee. So this is Dig Dugger. So in order to kill him, we are going to play him a jaunty tune. He'll split into one. We stab him a couple times, and that's it. Uh, Dig Dogger isn't really dangerous. His total HP he has is five. Is, is eight, my mistake. Uh, so he goes down in two strikes, and his damage output is what's really, really disgusting. His damage output is eight. So <laughs> do not get hit by Dig Dogger, because he hurts. <laughs> 